I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is a match once again. Welcome back to another review. There's another request on my Patreon, thanks to Mr. Majestic. And again, I apologize for my voice. I'm still getting back on track with my uh, my voice, trying to overcome my sickness. Again, I apologize for that. But if anyone wants to request any reviews, re-reviews, movie topics, reactions, topics in general, or whatever type of video, you can request it either directly, send it to my PayPal, or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries. But so, thank you so much. Now, today the review is The Part Is Mine. Now, this is a film I had heard of. Even though it sounded interesting, one of the things that drew me away for a while was the poster, which I know is a lame thing to do. Now, it's not the cover that I'll show around here. That's actually from a recent Blu-ray, which I would like to pick up that Blu-ray sometime. There's another poster that if you type in the part is mine 1986, you'll see it looks like a bunch of fucking kids, preschool, drew it in crayon while they were high on their supply of NyQuil while at 2 a.m. Like it looks fucking awful. <laughs> this cover, which I'll show in a little bit, it's not there yet, but you'll see it soon enough. It might not be as action pat, but it's a much better cover. But anyway, it came out around 1985-1986, and from what I understand, this is the first movie made for HBO. First movie made for HBO. And it's a film that has a little bit of first blood. Where a Vietnam vet is pushed around, and... He's tired of being pushed around and he decides to take his own stand. Now the film is on YouTube, although I do want to let people know if you do watch on YouTube, the video the person uploaded has glitches and stuff in it, so it's not the best way to watch the film. But it starts Time Lee Jones, who I think is a great actor, fantastic actor. You also have Helen Shaver, who I remember from films like Tremors 2, Aftershocks, actors I've always enjoyed. You got Yaffa Kodo, who's fairly solid in pretty much anything, whether it be an alien, the, uh, the running man, warning sign, and so forth. You have a musical score by Tangerine Dream. And the director's guy named Stephen Hilliard Stern. He's actually the guy who directed Rolling Vengeance, the vigilante movie where a guy uses a monster truck <laughs> now the issue I have with the film it is made for TV you do wish that it had a bigger budget also the direction is fairly generic you do wish that someone with much more energy much more pizzazz much more gumption had directed the film whether it be an Andrew Davis who would, would go on to work with Timely Jones and The Fugitive and Under Siege, whether it be with uh, 
Rennie Harlan, whether it be maybe even Ted Kotcheff, who did First Blood and Uncommon Valor, or a number of other actors would have given a bit more energy, camera movements, camera angles, a bit more momentum. Again, it's directed like a TV movie, because it is a TV movie, although I didn't for HBO. But the cast and the concept, I thought, made it work fairly well, to the point I would say this film is underrated. Because Timely Jones is a Vietnam vet whose buddy has just committed suicide, and his buddy left a letter telling Timely Jones, I have this plan to take control of Central Park. I have this cache of weapons, and I've rid places in Central Park for non-lethal explosives, and there's some real ammo, but there's also some blank fake ammo, because I don't want to kill anyone, I just want to make a... I want to deliver a message. I want to deliver a message about how Vietnam vets are being treated, how Vietnam vets are being thrown about and no one cares about them anymore. And Tommy Lee Jones is unsure about it, but then a couple things happen where some cops hassle him and he's like, don't treat me like I'm some fucking junkie, I'm a vet. Just get out of here. Get out of the park or we'll arrest you. It's ex wife being a bitch. And Tommy Lee Jones, I thought, did a fantastic job. You're going, you know, how come every time I see him, he's sleeping? You know, every time I come around to see my kid, you always say he's sleeping. So, maybe a bit more could have been done to really push him over the edge, but still, he decides, fuck yeah, I'm going to take ownership of the park, I'm going to follow my friend's plan, and I'm armed with grenades and machine guns and, and so forth, steers people off. Uh, you get some fun moments of ironic stature like there's this couple and there's Tom Lee Jones with a machine gun and he's like you know there are muds and creeps in this park why are you bringing your lady here at this time of night <laughs> he's saying this while he's staying there with a fucking machine gun and then he's asking by the way you got change for a dollar I gotta use the telephone again this is to the couple while he's wearing a f this camo he's got a machine gun and the guy's like uh, I, I got 80 cents so the rest of the film is he gets the park under stat under control. Yafakoto is part of the cops. They go in. They get steered off because Tom Lee Jones has his razor wire perimeter or explosives. Granted, I don't know why someone tried to explain to me he's wearing camouflage. Why does he have a big, like, bright blue cap? New York Yankees cap. Someone's going to have to explain that to me. Like camo, like he's got paint, face paint, he's got camouflage, but yet he's got a big old bright blue cap. <laughs> you're not hiding from anybody when you're a bright blue with the head that phew, someone could just shoot right there. Hey, what's that thing that's bright blue? Oh, it's this Yankees cap. I mean, you would think at least get like a, a green cap or something. But a bright blue cap, I, I didn't. I'm sure, yeah. That's one of the few logic gaps. I'm sure there's other smarter people that could fit plenty of logical gaps in the movie. But I do like the actors. I like Yafakoto because he kind of. You tell he has a little bit of. If not sympathy, but he's not, you know, Yafakoto doesn't play a villain. He can kind of understand what Tom Lee Jones is doing, but just doesn't think this is the right way to do it. Helen Shaver's reporter and her and Tom Lee Jones start the bond. He starts letting out his broadcast on FM about, you know, there's a lot of people like me in the city who don't feel any control over their lives. He talks about the philosophies, and then later on he's listing crimes and injustices where Vietnam vets either they died and froze to death because their heat was turned off or suicide and the point that some of the public are kind of rooting for him like this guy who says he's from Queens is like I'm for Queens and hey I'm all for the guy uh, well one woman says this is the wrong way to do it another woman saying you know I'm so sick of these moon eye pencil neck wimps on TV I'm glad to see a man with some gumption <laughs> which that's a, where I stole the word gumption from this lady 
stuff happens ultimately it the some other assholes decide to hire two hired killers including one from the Via Con to go into Central Park and stop Townley Jones now like I said I wish the film had a bigger budget but you have these two hired killers go up against Timely Jones either more budget or more uh, directing style if you got a William Freetin if you got like I said a Rennie Harlan you got any of these other guys that give a bit more energy a bit more pizzazz or a bit more tenacity or ferociousness I guess I mentioned William Freakin because what he would do with Timely Jones later in The Hunted, which is a great movie. Like a bit more t energy to the direction would have been appreciated. A bit of a more of a budget so more stuff could be done. But Timely Jones, I think, does a good job acting wise as to the cast. I like the idea of a guy taking over Central Park, and the movie never loses my sympathy with Timely Jones. He doesn't do anything that. Oh, my sympathy's gone. He, that never comes into play. So I thought they handled that fairly well. Where he doesn't want to hurt anybody. He just wants to get this message across. I thought they kept that line in toll for the entire film. Uh, the ending was satisfying to me. It wasn't anything too out of the blue or ridiculous or preachy or what the fuck kind of ending. So to me the ending was satisfying enough. Uh, nice that tangerine dream did the music tangerine tangerine dreams a very um, very capable band that bring a lot to their films whether it be miracle mile or the keep or legend or some of their other movies they've done the score on so it's definitely a big plus and i did the message is understandable but i didn't think it was too preachy overall i think this is a it's a good if you're into films like First Blood or those kind of movies where don't expect a lot of action. It's not a film with a body count. It's not a film with tons of firefights, explosions. But I do think it has some good acting. I think Timely Jones gives a really solid performance. I think it's an interesting idea. Uh, handled fairly well. But again, the director needed maybe someone with a bit more oomph to it. Or really you play with the camera work and camera angles and maybe be with the edit like just something more to it again that may be because it was made for HBO and not theatrical so that could have been one of the detriments too but yeah if you like Tom Lee Jones if you like 80s movies if you if any part of the plot seems interesting to you it's definitely worth a look Again, don't expect a wall to wall action film. It's not that. It's, I guess you would say, sort of more in tone of First Blood. I mean, I would put First Blood above it because I did have the budget and Ted Kotchev did have that more oomph as a director compared to this guy. But you know, in that style, I forget the film. I know uh, Dirk Benedict did a film. My friend Efri talked about it long ago that dealt with a Vietnam vet coming home. But you have Gary Busey and Eye of the Tiger, but that's more of an action film. But, you know, that's a good one about Vietnam vet getting out of jail and coming home. Um, but this is well worth a look. You know, I, it's a film no one talks about ever. Like, no one ever talks about this movie. It was a shame. Like I said, I think it's a bit underrated. It never really got its fair shot, and I think it deserves it. Again, could more have been done? Yes, but as it is, it got some smirch chuckles on me. It was entertaining. Uh, Timely Jones, I thought, pulled it off very well. Yaffa Koto, it was always nice to see him in there. Helen Shaver, like I said, I'm a fan of hers. And overall, it was a satisfying watch. A satisfying watch, so there's really nothing that got me that mad or angry or upset about. So I don't want to give everything away, but you know, for those who are interested, it is for free on YouTube. Like I said, there are glitches though on that. If you don't handle it, sure. If not, I'll find it on Amazon, you know, any streaming service or it's on Blu-ray or wherever else. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care and we will see you guys later. Bye-bye.